guys, this is going to be a pretty simple video. This is just going to be my uh, review over the Avanti Airbrush. This is that simple $20, $25 one you can get from Harbor Freight Tools. My uh, 15 12 I don't, I don't know, it was definitely under 20 bucks. but I had a $20 red uh, airbrush that I got from Amazon that actually finally crapped out. So I've already technically already uh, inspected it, took a look at my contents because I had to make sure everything was there. But uh, I wanted to go ahead and do this video now because I'm actually going to use this for a past video that we did, or future, depending upon when this comes out, on a custom uh, Sengoku Astray. So I'm going to do a little bit of footage in my air booth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and capture some of that. We're going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing and just show you guys the content. So let's check it out. So uh, don't be a goober and don't open it from the top. It's going to have some tape here at the bottom that you can just slit and then just kind of remove. That way you can keep the packaging in good condition. So in case you figure out this isn't for you or you bought the wrong stuff, then you can easily go get it returned. So it comes in this really nice, awesome black box here pretty sturdy box actually truth be told um, and so yeah this is the airbrush that you get essentially it comes with uh, one complete airbrush set so if you're new to airbrushing and if you're um, just starting I would love to be able to tell you and you know kind of demonstrate what that's all about so so breaking it down uh, it's gonna come with the main body and it is it is gonna come with its main adapter So if you already have a hose, you're perfectly fine. You don't have to uh, you don't have to get another one of these The well does come off. It is detachable uh, Now essentially this is starter at a 0.3 millimeter uh, needle So it has a 0.3 millimeter uh, threading point at the end So we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about the brush, but you get two tools with it, right? Oh my gosh, you get two tools tools right this tool the wider tool is essentially so you can take the entire like front component off you know what I mean so we're actually gonna go ahead and do that real quick be right back all right I got mine loose so you're probably thinking what's that for what you know what good does that do well it's perfectly fine because this is your essential needle tip well I'm sorry your your muzzle your nozzle whatever nozzle there you go and this is what you're gonna essentially uh, want to keep squeaky clean because this is where everything is gonna pass through so I know you guys can see that little tiny tiny hole that passes through that's that's this part buddy so that's what the first screw does now the second screw is actually this is where if you're going to be fancy and you already know about airbrushes awesome but if you're new to it you're gonna understand and learn that there's this small little like you're you have this essential like needle tip point that comes out at the uh, at the front Oh wow, look, I still have some paint art from last time. I'm glad that I took this apart. So I've actually already used this 100% truth be told. I just cleaned the hell out of it so you guys couldn't tell. But here's a prime example of why you want to be able to take this off. Hidden sludge, bro. Hidden sludge. So I'm actually going to leave that kind of loose and we're going to go ahead and just kind of chillax. But for the most part, the rest of this kind of comes apart very easily you're gonna want to take your back off now this is of course how you clean your airbrush so you're gonna unscrew this one back piece here and essentially now you can take your needle out so uh, let me just be the first to tell you it's always best to take your needle out from the front why yes I could have pulled it through and and had an easier access but I would have been dragging that dirt and that excess grudge all through the barrel of my airbrush so shout outs to Barbados Rex and uh, another diorama specialist who actually advised me of doing that so yeah like I said now I can run this through some cleaning solution uh, and me I'm gonna be honest with you guys I use the uh, Hobby Lobby ten dollar twelve dollar uh, airbrush cleaner it works mad wonders uh, I will occasionally dap a little bit of thinner in there uh, sometimes I'll get like a napkin so for example here's what I'll do I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. So, yes, it's it's supposed you're supposed to get airbrush uh, cleaner and use that, but it's so much more easier. So what I do, get a little bit of that that there uh, thinner, right? Get your needle, and then especially where the the sludge is the most, just kind of pinch it very lightly. Don't bend it, and pull, and spin. Pull. And spin right and now your sludge is on your napkin and you've got a clean needle so 
definitely definitely a smart thing to do so yeah that's pretty much the content of what's going to happen for this so let's go ahead and put this sucker back together and then we're going to show you guys it in action all right i went ahead and did a little uh pre-clean because i know i'm fixing to have to use the essential equipment but i did want to go ahead and kind of show you guys how to put it back together so you can use your hands for this part if you want to um you can just kind of screw this back over here right and then what you're going to do after i was looking for the, the nozzle <laughs> there it is you're going to want to put your nozzle back on right and then just kind of push your needle as far in as it can really go right okay cool and then what you're going to do is put this little mini bolts back on because this is what tightens the actual flow from needle to the inside of this uh this chamber so it's what pulls it back so that way it can actually drop and allow for the paint to go outward and then of course just put your pants on to your airbrush and my boy my girl you are good so nice squeaky clean airbrush let's definitely go check it out and see how it does all right so you're gonna notice a slight difference about the airbrush now. Uh, usually when I know I'm gonna be doing a mass amount of paint, or I'm gonna be doing, uh, you know, just like a texture or something, a lot of cleaning, I'll switch out and I'll use my dummy chamber, and then uh, I'll usually keep my better one for, you know, a later time, or just later use. So, now that we know that we're good, we can see a natural stream kind of flowing. You're perfectly good. You guys can see that. It's not flowing up my hand, but it is flowing into my filter. So, things are going to get kind of loud. So, what you're actually seeing me spray right now is a mixture of airbrush liquid and uh, water with just a tiny, tiny amount of thinner, right? I'm just totally, totally cleaning out that well. I'm just making sure that we're good, seeing that it comes out. And then uh, we'll put our paint in and start. All right, so I just finished using my brush. As you can tell, there's a little bit of blue paint there. So some of the things we're gonna wanna do to go ahead and take it apart is start with your, your nozzles, right? Go ahead and take those off. Let's see, this one's still loose enough, cool. So you're gonna go ahead and get that. Then you get the uh, back to your brush. 
And like we said earlier, it's always best to just kind of push the needle out forward as you're gonna have, look at all that blue paint. You know what I mean? There was no blue paint down here, but we would be dragging all of that through. So you see how there's little to no blue paint down here? Yeah, that would not have been fun. So, all we're gonna do is take this little device off. Definitely wanna clean your needle the best because the needle is absolutely, you know, the most prime essential to being able to have a clean flow and being able to have, you know, actual paint come out because essentially, if this is dirty, and you have any of this like residue here on your on the end of your needle that can also backfire do a couple things first what you could do is kind of do a dry clean just kind of get a, a, a q-tip just get or a cotton swab sorry q-tip ah, they're both the same thing and just kind of do a bit of a dry clean right just kind of get most of that out and then what you can do is now these are called droplets or droppers i think you can get like five gross i think you can get like five or twelve for a good three to five bucks so what i'm gonna go ahead and do is use one that actually has the tip i'm gonna get a little bit of my airbrush cleaner again this is stuff you can get at hobby lobby and what i'm gonna do is from the back of my brush i'm gonna go ahead and drop in a little bit of this uh, brush cleaner so it drips all the way to the front and essentially what it's just done is you've put a lot of it through the main path of the chamber. So, let's grab another tool. Now you can definitely get these on Amazon. There are tools that essentially you can just type in airbrush cleaner and you're, truth be told, you're gonna see quite a lot of stuff. So, I prefer to get the smallest sizes and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is dab a little bit of that on my airbrush. I'm actually gonna clean the, uh, the nozzle. So I'm just gonna kinda get in here, do a little bit of a scrubby scrub if I can. to the best that I could in there. So let's go ahead and dip up here. Now here you're gonna wanna kind of get as much in there as possible and then just keep doing a directional twist because essentially what you're doing is you're cleaning out that main well right there. So you're gonna wanna get anything that might have clumped up or got uh, super, super chunky out of there and then you should have a cleaner path and then pretty much from there what I like to do is I like to get a little bit of airbrush cleaner on this tool here I'm really not too sure what it's called and then I'll put it from the back and essentially I'll just kind of like ram it in and out and essentially what this does for me is this kind of pushes through any excess paint so I'm just gonna hit it right there oops don't wanna get stuck and then from there what I'll do is I'll get my napkin and then I'll kind of judge how much I'm actually getting off. You know what I mean? Oops, sorry guys. So I'll go ahead and clean and I'll be able to use that as my marker for how much is exactly being removed. So what I'm doing right now is I've just got a Q-tip. I put some of my brush cleaner or airbrush cleaner in this little uh, device and I'm pretty much just going through and making sure that it's all nice and clean. As you can tell, we're putting it in there. It's pretty white and we're not really getting a lot of blue back. Although I feel like I may get some now because we're getting those deep crevices. There you go. Not too bad, not too bad. So like here's all white. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Dap it up with some cleaner. Dry it off. Actually, no. Try to leave as much cleaner as you can in there because you want to leave as much uh, airbrush cleaner within the reservoir as possible because you want it to still have a little bit of a lubrication so that way you can essentially put your needle in there with like next to no issues. Let's see if I can get that going now. Cool. Finish up here real quick. Not too bad, okay. So then we're gonna go ahead and put our needle through and then we're just gonna kind of wipe it to get the last excess because my tool is not fitting this brush. Sorry for the cat, you guys. So let's see. Put that through again. We have the same amount. Yeah, you have a little bit of excess there. So it's alright to be able to just kind of keep cleaning that and everything. What I'm going to do is kind of go back and forth and just give the entirety a wipe. Here we go. Bam. So it looks pretty clean. So yeah, I think we can trust it. I think we're good to go. What I'm going to go ahead and do is put the needle in there for the final time. And I'm actually going to leave it because now what I'm going to go ahead and do is kind of work on the, uh, the nozzles here. 
So I'm just rinsing them real quick into uh, into the brush cleaner. This is actually still pretty clean, but manageable via a Q-tip. So let's add some more, rinse this, let it soak for about a minute or two, and then just kind of scrub. So this is the very, very front of your airbrush. I want to make sure that it's very important that you guys understand after every use, you're going to want to clean the ever living crap off of the tip. Okay. Now there's no needle here, so you're perfectly fine. What you're good to do is good to soak it in a little bit of uh, airbrush cleaner, maybe about a minute or two, and then just periodically get a Q-tip and then just kind of like throw it in there and then just do a little, little swib. You know what I mean? And just kind of get all the excess out and essentially you should come out with something like this so it's not that much not that bad but this is definitely the most important key element as this is what the essential needle and everything is going to pass through so you're going to want to be able to make sure that that extends through and actually has the ability to spray outward because if it doesn't and if your airbrush isn't spraying odds are it's because one your air hose is not connected properly, or two, I'm gonna say it like it is, we all know that bitch is probably clogged, sorry. Right on, so now that everything is essentially clean, you can go ahead and put it together. So, starting with your needle, you know you're gonna wanna thread it through, put your first tip on there, and then just like I always say, give the needle a little bit of a push, or you can just wait till you have officially everything you need on there, because I mean, truth be told, there's no sense in wait, you know, pushing it. So let's see, we got that in there. Let's go ahead and get the final piece, which is gonna be over here. Really, I'd say worry about making sure that your needle is all the way pushed in before you get this back pincher, pincer thing here, right? I like to push down and then just screw in because that is 100% telling me, hey, my brush and the needle are grabbing. So it's actually, as I pull on the trigger, the, the needle back here is indeed moving. So, from there, you're just gonna wanna close it, and voila, you have yourself a clean airbrush. So, um, if you do this after every use, you should be able to maintain cleanliness. I myself need to learn a lesson or two from that <laughs> because I did not clean everything off. But that's perfectly fine. Up until this one little smidge here, you guys probably wouldn't have been able to tell. But for the most part, yeah, the Venti airbrush is really a badass brush. I really like the work that it did with uh, with everything over here. So, like, I mean, for example, this is the mask to the Sengoku Astray. Sorry, I'm trying to watch or uh, do everything, but it came out freaking awesome. I didn't have to worry about the uh, the distance. I didn't have to worry about you know like the spray pattern or anything or the flow actually. So probably cleaning before and after definitely. Uh, it's definitely worth it. It's, you know, it's a pain in the ass, but if you really, really, really want your stuff to shine and just come out, you know, fucking perfect that first time, just clean your brush after every use. You know what I mean? Now, if you're gonna be doing like light gray and then you're gonna be going for dark gray, you can get away with it. You can do light gray, you know, get yourself a nice airbrush cleaning pot, which is like five to $10. And then, you know, fill, fill a good majority. Like say this is your, your well, right? I'd say, put like to here of cleaner and then just run it spray it clean it get a napkin clean out your well and essentially your uh, you know this will be cleaner so you can put a, a different type of paint in there and then yeah from there all you really got to do my guys and gals is put in your next paint and you guys are good to go so thank you for watching my tutorial on the Avanti airbrush uh, I'm gonna yeah go play mo and go Gunpla. Sorry, I got lost in thought there. I was like, man, this is actually really worth it. That's $25 airbrush. And it's crazy because, like, I, I know that this is just $25. I'm trying to wonder what the hell the quality of those $100 ones or, like, the, uh, gosh, Iwata airbrush. They're, like, $60, $80, $100. And I'm just, like, wondering what kind of quality can those give you? If, if I'm this happy with $25, I must be ecstatic with more. Thank you guys for watching. Go Gunpla. Catch you later.